please welcome YouTube creator Riyadh Kala. Right, so school. For me, it was less about learning and more about surviving. Surviving the constant onslaught of bullies who hated the difference that lived inside of me. I was young, gay, and in their eyes, the ideal target. I remember one day, I was just at my locker getting my books, and I felt a group of people sort of gather behind me. And before I knew it, they had pushed me so hard into my locker, my head had whacked onto the metal frame. So naturally, I turned around to see what was going on, and they started shouting abuse at me. You sissy boy, you bum boy, you queer. Why do you sound like a faggot? I didn't realize at the time that that was actually the beginning of a decade-long battle of shame about my voice. But not to get too serious too quickly, I am Riyadh, and I am an absolute attention seeker. I was born that way, honestly. I literally came flying out of my mother's womb with jazz hands, singing musical theater numbers, and looking for the nearest camera. Hi, Riyadh. Hi, yeah. Hello. Is that nice? Look at the ice lighting there, the camera. Camera? Camera. Oh. See, pushy stage parents. Come on, camera, make the vlog, get the money for the family, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all their fault, it's all their fault. Now, from a young age, honestly, I was absolutely obsessed with the world of broadcasting. I wasn't like all the other boys who were into that thing. What is it called? Where it's like a sack of air and they kind of kick it up and down the field. <laughs> football, yes, football. Not for me. For me, it was and still is all about one iconic woman in particular, Queen Oprah. <sighs> oh, yeah. I'd rush home from school every day, flick on the TV, ignore my homework, and just sit there in awe, watching my queen do what she does best. And I knew then I wanted to be just like her. Confident, respected, and a master storyteller. Now, I know what you must be thinking, Riyadh, did you actually go out, buy a painting of Oprah Winfrey, put it on your wall, and pose for a picture with it? Well, of course I didn't. Don't be silly. I uh, commissioned an artist to paint the original piece. I put that on my wall, and then I posed with it. It's all about the detail. But she did help me. She helped me find my calling and what I wanted to do with my life. And I had a mission, like you heard already, of becoming a broadcaster. And this was the very beginning of that journey. That's an antenna sticking out of the roof of my childhood home. I begged my dad to put it there so that I could launch my own very illegal pirate radio station at the age of 15. On my station, I was DJ RK, playing you the biggest hits on the hook 100 FM. I was cool, I was slick. This radio alter ego made me a jock. For two hours a day or thereabouts, I could let go of the shackles of what was happening in school and have a voice for once and not have anyone say anything back to me. And over the years, through a lot of hard work and perseverance, I slowly but surely rise through the radio ranks in Ireland and landed myself a job in one of the country's most prestigious commercial stations. I had made it. That's my co-host. <laughs> not really. It's cute though, isn't he? And I was over the moon. I, I, you know, my dream was a reality now. And I remember I was at a station party and my boss, he came up to me out of the blue, and he put his arm around my shoulder, and he said, Riyadh, look, we're very happy with the show, it's doing very well, it's rating very well, but there's just one thing um, I'd like you to work on, if that's okay. And I'm like, yeah, 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 what, what, what? If you could just sound less gay, that'd be great. I couldn't believe what this guy was saying, this guy who held my dreams in his hands. He went on, he said, look, we're just really worried that, you know, if people hear the way you talk, then they're going to flick over to the rival station and we'll have lost them. In that moment where he said that, I was dragged straight back to the school playground where those boys were saying, you sound like a faggot. It felt exactly the same. And I thought to myself, OK, you have a platform, you have a voice as such, you have a dream job. What, what's the problem here? Well, the problem was that how the hell was I supposed to put positivity general goodness or inspiration into the world when I wasn't even allowed to be myself. So something had to change, and quick. So step in that site that we're all here to celebrate, Facebook. <laughs> different, different, <clears throat> YouTube. <sighs> but why YouTube? Why YouTube? So on YouTube, I 
was able to reach an audience around the world with my content, not just in a region. On YouTube, I could keep ownership of my ideas and build an online company. And on YouTube, most importantly, I didn't have to ask anyone for permission to be authentically myself. Actually, being myself was going to make my channel do even better. So I said goodbye to regional radio. I'm going global. And I got to work, making the ideas that I was always afraid of pitching to the bosses. And the unexpected happened. Almost overnight, I went viral. And then I went viral again and again. And what hit me more than the articles, the incredible engagement, the rising view count, the subscriber base that was growing, was what these people were saying. Riyadh, I came across your channel today, and you got me through a really, really dark patch. Your videos have inspired me to come out to my parents tonight. Watching you over the years has made me decide that I am not going to take my own life. I couldn't believe what I was reading. The thing that I once hated most about myself, that gave me so much shame and pain, my voice, was now somehow helping people. How? Well, it took me a while to figure it out, but now I know. On YouTube, I can connect with my viewers in incredibly deep and intimate way, a way that is almost impossible to do on traditional media. We communicate in the comments back and forth like a conversation. They tell me their worries, their fears, their excitements, their passions. They tell me what they want to see more of on my channel. They tell me what they want me to stop making. Very good at that one. <laughs> and I build these sort of digital friendships that cross continents. And these are people that are just like me. So they're no longer feeling as alone, and either am I. It's incredible. And I know you will have seen some of it at the beginning, but let me just reiterate. In just a few years, this incredible platform, YouTube, has brought me so many opportunities, dreams that I never believed I could have. Uh, I got to meet Theresa May in her garden. It was meant to be a nice, chilled-out event, but I went up to her and I said, hey, what are you going to do about the homophobic laws in Northern Ireland that are not allowing gay people to get married? Come on, hon. Sort it out. She wasn't <laughs> expecting that. They nearly took me off. Uh, I worked with Prince William to promote his anti-cyberbullying campaign, Stop Speak Support. Incredible guy, smells wonderful. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I hosted a six-part documentary series for the BBC called Queer Britain, where I explored some of the biggest issues facing the LGBT community today. I signed a book deal to write a life bible, sort of a guide for young gay kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. The book is a life bible for young gay guys to coach them on how to come out. And in the last month since the book came out, it's now a number one bestseller. <clears throat> Delighted about that. <laughs> and I guess one of the things that I'm most proud about is that YouTube announced me as one of their global Creators for Change ambassadors. They commissioned me to go to Swaziland in South Africa to film a documentary with an incredible group of activists who are fighting to put on the country's historic first ever Pride March in the face of a homophobic king. Just amazing, amazing story. But believe it or not, you made this happen. You're more than just a brand, a logo, a product, an idea. When you partner up with YouTube, you are a force for good in the world. Your decisions as a brand not only shape lives, as I said before, they save lives. And you do this by empowering millions of creators just like me to continue producing content that connects, sort of mixes laughter with learning that inspires young people endlessly. So I want to say thank you to every brand that's represented here today and to my gorgeous YouTube family for giving me my voice back. But more importantly, thank you for helping to amplify and energize the next generation of creators who are on the way up. Thank you for listening. We did it! We did it, Marie! Yes! Oh, that felt amazing. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it inspired you in some way. If you're an up-and-coming creator um, and you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll try and answer them. Other creators will help you too. We're all here to support each other. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, tell your friends about it, and we will see you in the next vid. Goodbye. We're off to get some wine. Come on.